Daisy Duck is one of Disney's most well-known characters of all time. She is the lovable, confident and slightly temperamental counterpart of Donald Duck, though much more sophisticated and high maintenance, as well as the best friend and sometimes friendly foil of Minnie Mouse. While Daisy has become synonymous with the Disney brand over the years, it may surprise you to learn that she only ever appeared in 14 classic Disney shorts between the 1930s and 1950s, before becoming a star of comics and a more regular screen character thanks to a slew of television appearances in the late 1990s and early 2000s. This is despite debuting only three years after Donald, who appeared in a total of over 170 classic shorts. In 2019, Daisy Duck turns 82 years old, and in her eight decades of existence, her look, design and personality have evolved subtly through changing animation styles. In this video, I will trace the evolution of Daisy Duck right from her first appearance as Donna Duck in 1937 to today in 2019. To do so, we will look at the most drastic and important changes prevalent across a selection of classic shorts and series in this edition of Explaining Disney. Daisy Duck would first appear in Mickey Mouse short Don Donald, the first ever headline starring role for Donald Duck and one of the very few Mickey Mouse shorts not to feature Mickey in any capacity. In this short, Daisy appears under the name Donna Duck and is introduced as a love interest for which Donald could comically vie his affections. As the short is set in Mexico, the character first appears in traditional Mexican attire with a green and red colour scheme. She is drawn in oversized pumps which, much like in the appearance of Minnie Mouse, are designed for for comic effect. She's also drawn with shiny eyelids as was a traditional animation style of the time. It's also worth noting that the character's voice here is provided by Donald's voice actor Clarence Nash. <laughs> this is the one and only time the characterization of Donna ever appeared in a cartoon short though she would briefly appear afterwards in numerous issues of the UK Mickey Mouse comic series Mickey Mouse Weekly in a short run series of 1937 strips titled Donald and Donna which just so happened to be Donald's first comic headliner. Considering this as Daisy's first appearance may be controversial for some, as the identities of Daisy and Donna have been established as two separate characters in some Disney media. A number of Donald Duck comic strips would show both Daisy and Donna together. However, it is worth noting that the comics and the shorts never quite share the same continuity, with the comics arguably being considered non-canon or taking place in an alternate Disney universe. Partly the reason I scarcely refer to the comics in this series. Regardless of this, the fact remains that the mere existence of Donna would go on to inspire the creation of Daisy in later years, not only in that they're both female ducks, but in that they both share a similar design. That said, the Disney Studios do consider Donna to be the very first appearance of Daisy, and have even mentioned so in printed publications, and have included the Don Donald short on multiple Donald and Daisy compilation collections on home media. Some publications even refer to Donna as perhaps being a character portrayed by Daisy. Let's also not forget that Goofy had initially debuted as a character called Dippy Dog. It wouldn't be for another three years in 1940 that the character would appear again in Donald Duck's short Mr. Duck Steps Out, where she would finally take on the name Daisy. In this short, Daisy once again appears as Donald's love interest as we are witness to what we assume is their very first date. Here, Daisy is dressed in a puffed sleeve blouse, large bow, oversized pumps and a bangle. The ruffled feathers on the lower portion of her coat, much like in the design of Donna, were designed to appear as a skirt. We can see that right from the very beginning Daisy appears pretty much as we've come to know and love her in more or less her classic design. Though throughout the classic shorts, the colour scheme of her clothing would continuously change from short to short, with her most recognisable pink and purple colour scheme not becoming synonymous with the character until much later. While Daisy looks quite similar to her previous Donna design here, it's important to note her cuter, more expressive and more human-like design, employing animator Fred Moore's character style introduced in 1939. What you may also notice is that given Daisy was a later addition to the core Disney family, she's the one main character to be introduced in colour and with a squash and stretch animation design, having debuted outside of the black and white era of rubber hose animation. In this short, Daisy was originally voiced once again by Clarence Nash, taking on Donald's duck-like voice. Hello, Donald. However, in more recent years, the short has been redubbed for syndication with modern voice actress Tress McNeil. Hello, Donald. 
Daisy's next two appearances were mere cameos, where she would appear in costume, ditching her more traditional look. The first of which being 1941 Donald Duck short A Good Time for a Dime, where she appeared as an Arabian dancer in a penny arcade machine that Donald finds at an amusement arcade. While this seems pretty tame today, for 1940 standards this was certainly quite risque, especially in an animated short most specifically geared towards children. The appearance of Daisy in this short also remains controversial today, with most modern day Disney publications referring to this as a look-alike or simply omitting it from reference altogether. Then again in 1941's Mickey Mouse short Nifty 90s, Daisy would briefly appear alongside Donald, Huey, Dewey and Louie. It's this short, the only appearance of Daisy in a classic Mickey short, that we could consider as the moment she was finally initiated into the lexicon of Disney's main recurring characters. Though in 1940 she had become a regular character of the Donald Duck newspaper paper strips. However, mostly due to the fact that Donald was exclusively used in a series of wartime propaganda shorts from 1942 to 1943, she wouldn't appear in the short films again for another four years until 1945's Donald's Crime. Here Daisy takes on her most iconic purple and pink colour design for the very first time, though her shoes would remain green. And Daisy would be presented with a normal voice for the first time, as provided by Gloria Blondell, who would voice the character for a total of six shorts. Good night. Big shot. That same year's Cured Duck would see Donald Duck undergoing anger management to cure his bad temper. While Donald's issues would be somewhat fixed by the short's end, we discover that Daisy too is not without her issues, displaying her very own somewhat temperamental side for the first time. Here she would appear in a yellow and green colour scheme, which would be used quite frequently from here on. 1946's Donald's Double Trouble would once again see Donald vying for Daisy's affections by hiring a more refined doppelganger in a short that once again again explores the early tumultuous relationship of Daisy and Donald. The short also gives another early display of Daisy's volatile side. In that same year, Daisy would briefly cameo in Dumb Battle of the Yukon after a letter she sends Donald asking for a fur coat works as the impetus for Donald to travel to the Yukon to hunt bears. This short would show the lengths Donald would go for Daisy, further cementing their meaningful relationship. 1947's Sleepy Time Donald is the first short in which Daisy takes more of a lead role, as she tails a sleepwalking Donald through the streets at midnight. Told mainly through her perspective, Daisy even breaks the fourth wall and speaks to the audience a number of times. Here she appears in multiple different outfits, all with varied colour schemes. While Sleepy Time Donald could be seen as Daisy's first lead role, the short which is generally considered as her first headliner or starring role was 1947's Donald's Dilemma. While the short takes on Donald's name, it is actually Daisy who is faced with said dilemma. After Donald is hit on the head by a falling flower pot, his voice improves, he becomes more refined and becomes a famous singer. Only problem is he gains amnesia and forgets who Daisy is. In the short, which is narrated by Daisy, she must choose whether to have the old Donald back all to herself or allow the new Donald to be given to the world. The short sees Daisy suffer all kinds of health issues including depression, insanity, insomnia, and even anorexia. This is a darkly twisted comic short, which shows Disney's attempt to break the boundaries of animated entertainment, as it became a medium that not only children, but adults could also enjoy. The short also works as a great character study of Daisy and her feelings for Donald. The dark nature of the short, however, would lead to it being heavily censored in later re-releases. Again, Daisy would take on multiple different clothing designs here, that would be most prominently featured in pink and red. 1948's Donald's Dream Voice would see Daisy predominantly in her green colour scheme and would find her voiced by Ruth Clifford, the then voice artist of Minnie Mouse, who took over vocal duties for this short only. Two years later, in 1950's Crazy Over Daisy, Daisy's next appearance and the first and only classic short to bear her name, Gloria Blondell would return to voice the role for one final time. This short would be set in the 1890s and feature Daisy in a period-inspired gown. Throughout the early 1950s, Donald Duck's popularity continued to soar to new heights. Between mid-1950 and early 1954, he would appear in 21 shorts, while Daisy continued to be underutilized, appearing in none. It's a 
assume that storytellers perhaps felt that the inclusion of Daisy harnessed the potential of Donald's own stories, in the same way that Mickey Mouse would rarely appear with Minnie for said reason during the same time period. Daisy's next appearance wouldn't be until four years after her last, in 1954's Donald's Diary. As a further exploration of their relationship, the short would feature a dream sequence where Donald imagines married life with Daisy. Here she would appear in more modern 1950s clothing, continuing to cement her role as a fashionista in the Disney universe, and one of the few characters who continues to conform to modern styles. This short would mark her final appearance during the classic run of Donald Shorts. 1954 would also mark the start of Daisy's own comic series, Daisy Duck's Diary, which ran until 1962 in the US, though continues in Italy today. This series would mark the very first time that Daisy was given the spotlight and more prominent role that she always deserved. In 1959, she would briefly appear in Donald Duck educational short, How to Have an Accident at Work, which would be voiced by famed voice artist June Foray. Best known as the voice of Rocky from the Rocky and Bullwinkle show, various characters in Warner Brothers and Looney Tunes cartoons and Lucifer from Disney's own Cinderella. This short is notable for being the final Donald Duck cartoon short. Daisy would continue to be a prominent force in comics throughout the 1960s, 70s and early 80s, though during this period following the death of Walt Disney, all animated short series were cancelled. 1983's extended Mickey Mouse short, Mickey's Christmas Carol, marked the grand return of the classic Disney characters to animation and would see Daisy take on the role of Isabel, the first love of Ebenezer Scrooge from the classic Dickens novel. Here she would appear in a pink colour scheme. Strangely, Daisy would completely skip 1987 series DuckTales, but would appear prominently in 1996 television series Quack Pack, over a decade since her last major screen appearance. In Quack Pack, Daisy would appear in a more modern design, with a fashionable 90s hairstyle, an ever-changing wardrobe of contemporary 90s clothing, ditching her bow altogether. Here, Daisy's eyelids would no longer be shiny, but instead a flat indigo colour, while her pupils would be made slightly smaller and purple. In Quack Pack, Daisy would take on the role of a television reporter, placing her as a smart, stylish and successful businesswoman, again playing up to her sophisticated image of the classic shorts. In 1999's Fantasia 2000, Daisy returns to a more classic look, without her 90s hair and with shiny eyelids. Here, her pupils remain purple. This is another example of a character performance from Daisy, as she plays against Donald in a biblical-inspired sequence. That same year, in Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas, Daisy's return to her more traditional classic appearance would continue, finally with the re-edition of Blouse, Bow and Skirt, which would now be made much more obvious due to its colouring. Her eyelids, however, much as in Quack Pack, would not appear shiny. This film is also notable for being the first program where Daisy would be voiced by her now current voice actress, Tress McNeil. Hello? Okie dokie. This same design would carry over into 1999 TV series Mickey Mouse Works, where Daisy would appear in a variety of shorts alongside Donald and cycle through a variety of different coloured costumes, much like in the classic shorts. It's also worth noting that Mouse Works would continue to display Daisy's irritability, showing herself to be perhaps more tumultuous than even Donald. The series would also develop her into a louder, more talkative and more meddlesome personality, as well as be the first series to develop her as the best friend of Minnie. Unlike most of the other characters in the series House of Mouse, Daisy would undergo another modern redesign. Here, she would most often be seen in a blue and purple employer uniform with a small bow on her head, which would sit upon a large ponytail. Here, her Mouseworks personality would carry over, though she would become more headstrong and determined in her quest for fame. The series would also see her become somewhat more independent from Donald, forging her own path and backbone. 2004's Mickey, Donald, Goofy, The Three Musketeers would see Daisy in yet another costumed character role, portraying the lady-in-waiting of Princess Minnie. 2004's Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas would return Daisy to her more traditional design, though once again without bow. However, would see her presented in CG animation for the very first time. Here, she would once again take on her more sophisticated, fashionable personality. This same CG design would be utilised in 2006 series Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, as well as in its two spin-off series, Minnie's Bow Tunes from 2011 and Mickey and the Roadster Racers from 2017. The two spin-offs are incredibly notable in this instance, as they prominently feature Daisy as a main character, in a way that she had perhaps never been utilised before outside of maybe Quack Pack. The series also firmly established her as the best friend of Minnie Mouse. In these three series, she takes on her most recognisable purple colour scheme, complete with bows. 
Currently, Daisy can be seen appearing in the recent series of Paul Rudish Mickey Mouse Shorts, which debuted in 2013. Here she appears in a stylized version of her classic design, most often appearing in a pink color scheme with her classic blouse and bow, though sometimes she does appear in modern themed outfits. She is drawn here in a style that somewhat imitates classic 1920s black and white animation, a style that was well outdated before her first appearance. This design sees her take on pie eyes for the very first time. Once again in this series, Daisy is placed as the best pal of Minnie Mouse and is more independent from her lover Donald. I'm certainly glad that Daisy has found a more prominent role in recent films, solidifying her as a Disney classic. And with that, it's over to you guys out there. I want to know what is your favourite Daisy Duck appearance over the last 82 years. Fire away in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos, you like what you've seen, you'd like to see more like this in the future, then please don't forget to hit that big old subscribe button up on your screen right now, and also hit that like button down below if you're feeling extra generous. Also, don't forget to check out my many social media accounts, and please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day.